truck is blazing up. Mm. Fire coming up. I get on to the st- uh, to the side, jump out, grab the fire fire, uh, fire, fire extinguisher. Yeah. Oh, that ain't gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me let me get away from this truck before it go boom. Has anybody did a diagnosis to find out what was wrong, what happened, like what caused that? Well, you know, DOT gonna come out. Yeah. DOT, first thing he had me, you got your you got your ELD? I said, yeah, it's in the truck. Right. He said, well, that's gone. <laughs> Let's go, Hustle Fam, Hustle Fam. We are back with another amazing episode. And today, we got a hip-hop, rap, legend, whatever you call it, (laughs) in the building, man. I'm here in TX, Houston to be exact, with my brother Lil Troy. What's going on, my brother? What's up, man? H-Town. What's up, my brother? Got it, man. I appreciate you having me on the show, man. Listen, man, I'm excited, man, because, you know, I'm a a hip-hop baby. You know, I I, I love music. It's a part of what we do here on Truck and Hustle. Truck and and Hustle. And to to have you here, you know, a legend in the game, and and the fact that you're in the trucking industry is so dope. You (laughs) know what I'm saying? So dope. Yeah, yeah, I had to switch it up a little bit. Had to switch it up. So we're going to talk about it, man, but we, you know, customarily on the show, we always got to kind of go through, you know, the backstory and kind of go into to the beginnings of our guests, you know, and, and, and we have to do that with you. I mean, there's a lot of people who know your story, <laughs> but we're going to talk about it a little bit and then we're going to bring it back to current into, okay. into the trucking game. All right? all right. So for the people who don't know about, you know, Lil Troy, about Shortstop Records, kind of get into it. Just tell us a little bit about where you from and just kind of how you came up, man. All right. Lil Troy here in the building, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, Come from doing music, south side of H Town, you know what I'm saying? Been doing music all my whole entire life and been putting out a lot of groups and stuff like that. Uh, got my own, my own album out, which, you know, the hit song, Wanna Be a Baller, <laughs> Shot Caller, 20 Years Blade, what? On the Impala, uh-huh. Caller, Get Late Tonight, <laughs> Switch the Road Tight, Got Spray by Ike, I Hit the Highway, Making Money the Flyway. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But it gotta be a better way, way. a better yeah. way, better yeah. way, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, you know what I'm saying? Yes, so my background is about music, you know what I'm saying? So I've been playing in the, in the band since third grade in school, you know what I'm saying? My mom and my dad played in the bands all throughout the city, all around the country and stuff like that. So I'm already was in the music like that already. Used right. to go to the to the shows with them and watch them play and stuff. So it's just, I, I was born and bred into doing music. Got you, and got so, you. All right, so when did you actually start, like, really taking it seriously? Because it, it, it was it's it always been in your family. You said that's, you know, your parents and all that, they yeah. did music. But when did you start taking it seriously as a career? And when did you know this was something that you could do with your life? Well, actually, my first album I decided to put out was Scarface. Okay. The rapper Scarface. Yeah, we, well, we know Scarface. We well, know Face. Everybody know Face. Face Mob. Well, well, Face was actually my first artist, and Face used to live with me and my mama. Get out of here. Yeah, Face used to live with us, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I took him to the studio, and uh, he was just 16 years old at the time. Okay, okay. So um, I had told him to rap about my life, you know what I'm saying? Let's put some real shit out there, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Something real that's going to touch the people. And the first song that we put out, I started Small Time Dope Gang Cocaine, pushing rocks on the block that never broke, man. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> no doubt. And that was me on the corners out there in, in, in the village, South Park Village, the dead end. Selling rocks and mm. selling selling work and stuff, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I would come from hustling, that's what I was doing. Yeah. So Face used to sit out there and watch us do this and see us doing it and everything. So he just went to the studio and we made a song about it. Okay. So that was my first song I was putting out. All right. So so at this at this time when you put Face on, you had you had Shortstop, right? Like, Shortstop. That was Shortstop Records. Eight, 1988. Cause I mean, I mean, you might have been one of the first guys out there with like an actual record company. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like you you go back to like 88. 88. Short, so how, what made you even form a record company? Like how did you talk about the it? guys? I, I had formed a band out of high school, right? Going in the footsteps of my mom now, right? And they ain't used to like to practice. So, you know, I got gigs lined up, but they wouldn't like to, they didn't want to practice. The drummer didn't show up this day, or the the the, the guitar player ain't show up this day, or the singers ain't show up the next day or something. So I got tired of them not not being coming together if we can make it make it right. Right. So next thing you know, everybody started coming out of these drum machines and stuff. 
Okay. So we got these drum machines, and then got with my boy Bruce Grim Rose and stuff. We started making up music. With the, the, I don't need no no guitar player. You don't no need more. those guys no more. I don't need you them got, guys. You got technology yeah. now. We got technology. You right. know what I'm saying? So right. we started doing music with with uh, 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 Grim, and he knew Scarface and Beto, and we put the shit together. Who were you listening to back then? Like, who were your influences in music at that time, besides your parents? Back then? Man, I can't remember who. You know, I grew up on 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 on, on the hippity hop and all that type of stuff back <laughs> right, in the day. Right. Kumo D and hop, them and all that. We grew hip-hop. up on them, you right. know what I'm saying? KL's one of them yeah. back in the day. That's what we was listening to. So y'all to. got love for the East Coast. Yeah, I had love New for the East Coast. I yeah. loved the East Coast music okay. at the time, you know what I'm saying? But then when we got started, we started, you know, I grew up on their music, but I felt the West Coast music, because I'm a street dude. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So I felt they music more, but New York had a bigger toehold on everything at the time for get their music out. You know what I'm saying? So, Got you. Because they had all the, all the big record companies all the and big everything were there, in, down man, there. In, in the city. So we got down there. I started a record company, Short Stop Records. You know what I'm saying? Right. And we started going to the studio, making music up and everything, trying to put music out. At, at, at that time, because the record industry is so different now, like what, what did a record company look like at that time in the 80s? Like, well, what to, for you to say you were doing business as a record company? What were you doing? Like you're pressing up, like records and going to stores and go hand in hand. Like tell me about the landscape at that point. Oh man, I started off selling record uh, cassette tapes. So you know what I'm saying? I'm selling the cassette tapes and, and 12 inch vinyls yeah. at the car wash, the detail shops, the barber shop, the beauty shops, hanging out at the clubs and stuff. You know, I'm selling CD and cassette tapes to everybody putting in their car. A lot of people wanted the wax because the wax was so gangster at that time. It's me, Scarface, and my whole crew. We all on the front cover, uh, on the cover, on my six day, um, on my Cadillac right at the time. Right. Elbows and voles on it and stuff. When we got all these big old guns on it, <laughs> we looking like NWA at the time, just like that. When they came out, we looking just like that. Right. But we were down in down south doing it. Got you. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of like what, you, what y'all were mirroring at that time. Y'all got yeah. that West Coast vibe, had, and y'all like, we yeah. want to do it like NWA. Yeah, we doing it like that. I was living like that. <laughs> so yeah. it was like, that's how I'm living. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, are they living, looking at my life? Right. What, what I'm doing down here? Right, And right. talking about it up there, but they were living it. We were living it here at the same time. Got you. Got you. Okay, that's dope. All right, so you put face on. Y'all get started shortstop records. Tell me about, like, that journey around that time. How was... How was it being a, a record la- label label owner around that time, like well, in the industry? Actually, I had Scarface, I had R.I.P. Uh, Mr. Three Two, he was on my label. Def Jam Blaster, I had a whole crew of little young dudes from high school. They was all in high school when I, when, they, when I had the label. Yeah. So I had an office, I had a studio, and I had a beeper a beeper company at the same time. A beaver company. I had a beeper company. <laughs> Say, man, don't don't a sleep. Beaver company. Don't we sleep. Going back. Don't sleep on the beeper company, man. I sold so many beepers, man, and, and I mean, I was selling so many beepers that, and matter of fact, I was selling beepers for our time. You had to pay for our time separate than the beeper. Oh wow, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. That's taking it way back. So wow. we got our time and beepers and stuff going, and the companies I'm buying the beeper from. They, 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 I'm saying so many people, they were like, uh, we need to know your, your contacts. We need, we need to know all the people buying the beepers from you. I right. said, nope, I got to deal with y'all. I'm buying the beepers from y'all. Because they want to go directly, directly to them. Direct to them. And, and I knew out. that. Yeah, right. man. Right. So I had to go through all that mess with, the, with, with all these beeper services and stuff. Cause I had like two or three different companies I was buying beepers from because they had different companies. Okay. That all of them wanted to know who I'm sending all these beepers to. Gotcha. I was sending people like they, they would send them crack. <laughs> Well, back then, I mean, everybody had a beeper. Everybody you know had a beeper. So, so it, wasn't, walking, it wasn't hard to sell. I'm they walk, sold themselves. I'm walking around two, three beepers right there on my on my waist, and somebody out there, they stop me and say, Troy, man, I need a beeper. Right. Yeah, I got one right here. Hold on. <laughs> I give them a beeper. I got the number. They yeah. got to come pay me every week for our time. Wow. So I didn't care if you, you can get a beeper right, right. now. You give me it's, my. It's all about the comeback. You, you, give, you give me $89 for a beeper. I'm getting them for $49, right? So you take the beeper. But you don't pay your bill. It ain't working. It ain't going to work. <laughs> it ain't beeping. It ain't beeping no more. You know what I'm saying? So that is funny. That deeper is funny. service. So I started That's doing dope. that for a while. And then I had the record company, too, at the same time. We were going doing shows and stuff, you know. It was so new to everybody at the time, though. You know, when we was doing it, it was so new. People weren't in, into it like they are nowadays. You know right. what I'm saying? It was just 
you, you, the money wise, you the people that understand how the money work and stuff. You know, so I had to go and learn how to sell to uh, sell to the distributors. But when I started with Scarface, I had to put my music in the stores on consignment. Mm. A lot of them didn't want it because it was too taboo with all those guns on the cover. Well, explain what consignment is for so people don't understand. What consignment that is, is where I give them to the stores for free for right now. I might give them 20 copies. I give them three or four free. The rest 17, they're going to hold them and sell them. When they sell them, they pay me. I come back every couple of days, every week, right. and see how many they got. They pay me. I give them some more. Got you. How, how many groups did you have out at one time, beside, beside, aside from Face? I had Face, 3-2, and another group of A&M. I had a couple of groups I, you know, uh, trying to do independently, you know, Mass 187 and stuff. Got you. And they all recording out of your studio, just kind of mm -hmm. in-house, and you kind of yeah. grooming them. Grim, Grim did... Grub did majority of my music. That's my little producer. He used to live with me and stuff. You know okay. what I'm saying? So we started making music at the house. Got you. Yeah, with the, with the SP 1200. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got you. Got you. <laughs> okay. All right. So you start growing that growing that record company, and then you then tell me about what kind of happens next as as the record company grows. Like, oh, most time most record company uh, producers what they're gonna do is uh, they're gonna go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, we're going to get caught up because we ain't got no institutions like down in New York and stuff that put the money behind us. So uh, I got to go get the money myself. Uh, so in the meantime, while I'm trying to get the money, I get I get caught up. I get out, back doing music again, and then back out there, out there all over again. Right. You know, and I, then I finally decided to do my own album. Okay. And I'm like, Ty D rappers, I had a bunch of rappers. They didn't like to promote themselves. I buy all these flyers and posters and all that. They wouldn't promote their sales like I would like them to promote their sales. Okay. So me and Grill was talking. He said, "Man, put your own album out." Okay. I said, "Grill my own rap. You know that. <laughs> I'm just I'm just a business man. Right. You know what I'm saying? The money, right. man. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he said, "Man, you could do it, man. Just get everybody and we just we just make a mixtape and put everybody on there together." So we went and got everybody, put them on different songs. Who we think would fit this song, this song, this song, did an album. And I took a picture of me sitting in front of my, my, my S500 Mercedes. I got a Rolex on already back then. Right. All right. the jewelry on. Early. Back then. Talk that talk. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> talk you, that talk. The only person that had the S500 Coupe Mercedes Benz like me was ball players. Mm. So you ain't seen them or maybe one or two in the hood. Right. Right. And I was the one. Yeah. <laughs> Riding yeah. around in big old coupe Mercedes and everything. And so and I went on, put out the music together, got my album cover, and I we put out one of Bill Ballers. Dope. And that changed everything, right? Everything. That went crazy. That went crazy. It changed our whole life, everybody's life. Tell, tell me about that transition, man. Because, I mean, before that, you were just kind of like a local guy trying to figure it out in terms of getting your music out there, right? Like trying yeah. to find something to stick. But, yeah, I was local here. And, you know, you could say we were local, but everybody knew who I was already. Gotcha. So I wasn't just a new person, just you ain't never heard of. You yeah, know, yeah, people yeah. heard a little true already because I had money already. I was, uh, like, I, I was my local in the music. I, yeah. I know everything yeah. else. Yeah. Your, your people preparation knew, precedes yeah, you. Yeah, people knew, is, yeah. knew me like that already. So yeah. when the music started happening, I'm promoting, I'm out there doing, out, doing it. So everybody like, wow, you know, they, they was amazed to see somebody from the neighborhood actually putting out music, not right. just talking about it. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. And as, as it got bigger and bigger and bigger, and when I did that baller, it, it just really just took off. You know what I'm saying? It just, how, how, did, how did that change your life? Like, as far as, like, monetarily to just take, like, did it, I mean, I know you was already getting money. You was yeah. doing your thing, but I'm sure that took you to a whole nother level. It took us to another level, but me, by me having money already, it didn't ever go to my head like got that. You. you see what I'm saying? So got I was used to, like I say, when I even was five months put the album out, I'm riding them big 500 Mercedes already, you know right. what I'm saying? So I'm already got all these nice things already. Got you. So I, by me being on the cover, I went promoted everywhere. Mm. So I'm taking it to people. People already know who I am. They really accepted it, you know what I'm saying? They like, wow, this is it. This is it, Troy. I mean, everybody liking it, you know what I'm saying? So, and uh, went to the radio station, and we have a thing down there called the Kappa. Okay. Uh, Kappa Beach Party. Okay. So what I did, I went to the radio station before the Kappa Beach Party came up, and bought a whole bunch of radio spots on the radio, ah, right? Okay. So, but this, how much a radio spot cost at that time? Do you remember? About fifty, sixty dollars or something. Okay, it okay. Was, it was cheap. Cheap. All right. So I bought a whole bunch of them for the whole weekend. Got gotcha. you. I'm down there doing concerts that weekend also, right? But on the radio, they I played my song "Wanna Be a Baller" for the first minute. Out when the song when the radio spot come on, I'll hear "Wanna Be a Baller." Then the verse come in right at at a minute. 
Brand new Little Troy in stores now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Got you. So you thinking you're hearing the song on the radio all day long. But it's a commercial. It's, it's a commercial. A, it's a, that's <laughs> smart. That's smart. That's crazy. So everybody that came to the Capitol, they hearing it. Man, what's that new song? Man, what's that one of your balls? That's a Little Troy. What's it? What? You know? Yeah. So they everybody going back to their cities and requesting the song. And some of the cities ain't even had a song yet because it was really just playing commercial. Wow. So you made yourself like go viral in a way. Yeah, I made in a like, way. By I did. paying for it. You know paying what I'm saying? For it. But it's called the station wasn't actually playing the song yet. Got you. But after that, that was that's genius. Yes, after that, that's when they start pay, playing the song like nonstop. That's genius. Okay, so <laughs> w- were you still in the, Were you independent? I was at independent. That point still, the okay. money I split was splendid. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? We getting seven, eight dollars a CD at the time. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting seven, eight dollars a CD. So it's h- coming to me. How are you dis- distributing your, your stuff? I mean, like nationwide, like outside of the area? Like Oh, out- see, we had distributors here. Southwest Wholesale was our main distributor here, which uh, Southwest Wholesale would get our music and distribute it to all the record stores everywhere else that okay. needed it. And you, you would pay them like a, a piece? No, they pay us, actually. They pay us. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's going to pay me seven fifty a CD. He, he's buying it in bulk. Buying it in bulk. Got and it. He's he'll selling, sell it for $10, he's selling it $10 or $8. He might say $8.50, $9 to another store. And the store selling for $10.99, $11.99. Got it. Like that. You know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I got my, I got a big point Yeah. off the top. You know what I'm saying? Wow. How, so, how many records did you sell like that? I sold a couple hundred. A couple hundred. Thousand? Yeah. Dope. Yeah. Dope. Dope. And then before I sold a couple hundred thousand, right before I sold a couple hundred thousand, Universal had called. Okay. But... Well, actually, Tony Draper from Suave House Records. Suave House, yep. Yeah, I'm in the studio. Got to get ready to do a show. Making my CDs up and everything. Tony Draper calls. Hey, man, what's up? Let's try. I said, what's up, Drake? Say, hey, man, these people trying to holler at you, boy. I said, who? <laughs> he said, I'm out in New York. I said, who's trying to holler at me? Universal? I said, for real? He said, yeah, man. I told them they can't come playing with you, man. I don't know let you talk to them, man. They want to sign you, bro. For real? They put them on the phone, Monty and Avery. They put them on the phone and talked to me. They say, man, we want to sign you right now. What we got to do? When can you come to New York? I said, I got a show the next two days. I can't come. Wow. He said, where you got a show at? I told them I had a show at the next night. They was down they there. Was there. They was at my show. They seen how packed the show was, how we turned it out and all this here. I see these two white boys over in the corner by the bar, right? So I get off stage, you know what I'm saying? Everybody talking, you know, doing my thing. You feel <laughs> me? So I go over and holler at them and shit. And, um... They say, man, we want to take you to New York tomorrow. Mm. We want to sign you right now. Wow. I said, well, I can go to New York tomorrow. Dope. So we went up, we all caught the plane, went to New York. I had my lawyer to go to New York. They had the paperwork ready. They started thinking I'm going to just sign something right then and stuff. I took about six hours, went through every line on the, on the contract, right. stretching stuff out. Hey, Warren, change this around. They don't need to say that. Want to change this around? You know, right. he know the language. I know what I don't want to hear in this country. Hundred percent. And they was amazed that I knew paperwork. Right. I knew I knew contracts. Got you. You know, Where, they, where'd you learn that from? I used to go sit. In the, I bought all the books. So you know, I was in, uh, how how to uh, uh, what's the damn books called? Like music it's industry Ad- contracts. It, it, it like music books industry books. Like Ad- uh, Patterson, he had to add some, and some other people. There was a guy named Donald something. Donald uh, Pass- Passman or something yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was like, a, like the yes. Bible. Everybody was yes. buying that book. Yeah, had that book and yeah. a couple of them. So when them, when I had guys out there on the corner or whatever, I had time, I'd go in the restroom and sit on the toilet and be reading. Mm. I'm reading because I know I need to know what I'm talking about when I'm doing business. Anytime you want to do business, you got to read up on the business that you're trying to do. Facts. Otherwise, you'll think somebody's trying to mess over you because you don't understand. Yeah. Not, not they just mess it over. You just don't know. Right. They might be giving you a good deal. Right. But if you don't know, you automatic first thing gonna come up. Oh man, they trying to mess over me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I, I worked a deal out myself and got it situated. And next thing you know, I had a whole bunch of CDs still at Southwest Wholesale that I need to sell. Right. So Universal let me sell all mine first. And then they turned around and then pressed them up and kept it and going. And they picked it up from there. Yeah. So what was your deal with Universal? How'd that look at that time? Ooh, it was nice. <laughs> Could, could you share like what those nice. numbers was looking oh, like? Nice, you know what I'm saying. They 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 peeled me off some money up front. Okay, but I had a good back end deal. Okay, that way I still get paid right now today. Got you. See what I'm saying? Uh, you. you know, you never. A lot of people want the money right now, but I was looking for if it worked down the line, how can I continue to make money? And that's the type of deal I got that I'm still getting paid from them real well right now. Right. And I ain't much on their label no more. 
Got, now, now, uh, Bola was that was that that was without Universal? Or did they pick that record up to where they could still distribute it and sell it? And yeah, okay, that was the album. Little Troy sitting fat down south, right? So that that song was on that was album. On that album, so they had to buy the album. So we weren't selling singles back then. Right, we, you had to go buy. You had to go to the record store and buy a whole album. Got you. So you released the song <clears throat> independently, sold about a couple hundred thousand by yourself, yeah. then sold the same song to Universal. Yeah. They hit you up with the front end, and then you collect on the back end as well for the life of the song. Yeah. Dope. And and, and that's to this day. To this day. And I ain't was on their I ain't was on their label. Right. Right. I got off their label. You you got off their label. Yeah, I went to uh, on my second album, I put out uh uh and I went to Koch and went and got me a better deal. Okay. Right. And uh, cause when I was in prison, when I was in prison, when one of, after one of the baller came out, then I went to prison. I had called a Fed case, gotcha. trying to put the album out. Got you. Got you. Know you. Yeah. So then trying when the album popped, up to put it out. The album popped off and everything, and I'm sit, I'm good now, but I still got this old case behind me. Right. So that one, I had to go to the Feds for a little while. Got you. And so while I was in the Feds, I told Universal, hey man, look here, I'm I'm getting ready to come home in a couple months. Let's start our our promotion, Little Troy, Big Baller Shot Caller, Walk the Walk, Talk the Talk, Fresh Off Lock. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm giving them the concept, everything, how you're going to do it. Right. You feel me? And then they like, well, Troy, we got to wait till you come home and and, 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 and then we'll start the promotions. I'm like, nah, why are we going to wait? We need to start this now. Yeah. So when I come home, I tell them, I show them album cover, how I want my album cover to look and everything. They said, we need to hear the music and we're going to give you a release date. I said, no, the release date is on the cover. <laughs> this is what we're going to put out. I already got the music. We're going to put this out on this date. They were like, oh, we need uh, A&R department to hear the music and see what we're going to do. I said, hold up. I'm my own A&R. When y'all heard my album, it wasn't no A&R from y'all had to listen to my album. Was it? Y'all heard my music playing. Right. So I'm my own A&R. They were like, well, Troy, we're going to need to do that. I said, I'll tell you what, Monty. We had a good run. Let me off the album. Let me uh, off y'all label, Monty, because you you finna stop my livelihood right now. Yeah. And by he said, Troy, we did good business together, man. I respect what you're trying to do. I will let you off the I will let you off the label. All right. So they sent me my they sent me the papers, let me off the label about two, three days. I got the papers. Then I called them back. Hey, Monty, I ain't I ain't see no check in in this, in this paperwork. <laughs> he said, What check? I say, look on page such such such. It's a pay or play check uh, clause in there. Either y'all play or y'all pay mm. for 150000 Wow. He went and looked at it, called me back, check be there tomorrow. Oh, wow. For me wow. to get off they label. Wow. For me to get off they so label. So how the hell did you know to put that in there, man? Come on, I told you I was sitting on the toilet, man, reading them books, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, telling you. Man, that's that's I, how you play the game, yes, bro. They had to pay me $150,000 to get, for them to let me to, off. For them to let you go. And continue to pay and me. And continue to pay you because, yeah. wow, that is that is crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. All right. So after that happens, what happens next? Well, I, I kept thought, you know, I was riding off that for a little while. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Good while. I still riding off of it. You know, I started trying to put some other music out. You know, like my son, T2. Had another group, Go-Getters. You know what I'm saying? Different groups I was mer- working with. But nothing just really, really transpired. Right. And then my my son, when I put him out, he was the hottest in the city, named T2. T2. He was in high school. Okay. All right? Doing shows in all the nightclubs in high school. My brother KB used to have to take him around because he was too young to drive. Wow. Okay. Take him everywhere. I mean, he was hottest on the radio station at 979. He was hottest on uh, Street Flavor. I mean, he was just uh, like a heartthrob. Right. Wherever he went. Right. Just Next thing you know, he catch a case, go to jail. Wow. So at the time, I'm talking to Universal Records. Universal Records wanted to sign him. Sony Records wanted to sign him. I got Atlantic Records wanted to sign him. Talk to me, people talk to me about him and stuff, right? He was just that hot. But he go to prison. Mm. So they killed everything for like eight years. And those eight years, I just fell out of music love. Got I just you. stopped doing music, sat back, and figured out what I wanted to do, which was too much of nothing. I ain't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting on them checks to come in and right. get paid. Because you got residuals coming, coming in, in, you got so, passive income, yeah. so you're kind of chilling. So it's like, sure. now it's like, what's going to be the next thing for me? Now you're kind of yeah. kind of formulating to figure it out. So he took eight years to come home, then he come home, it wasn't the same vibe because right. things done changed over eight years, you know what I'm saying? So right. now he's trying to get back in. It ain't going right, it ain't going good. They say, no, I decided to go get a job. Okay. I'm like, you know what? I'm tired of the music business. Right. So a friend of mine, a Hispanic guy, a friend of mine, came over to the house one day, and he was telling me about the safety. I said, man, what's safety? You know, I don't worry about that. He said, I mean, I do turnaround shutdowns. 
What the fuck is that? You know, I don't that. <laughs> right. He said, what you going to do, boss man? I said, man, I'm going to sit and smoke my weed every day and listen to me. You know what I'm saying? Listen to watch TV, smoke my weed every day. But I did, too. Right. So we kept on talking. He showed me his check. Okay. He said, man, I, 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 we made pretty good on our check, Troy. I said, huh? He gave it to me. I said, oh, that is pretty good for every two weeks. He said, no, nah, that's every week. <laughs> I said, what, every week? His check was about $3,400. Right? Okay, yeah. I'm like, nigga, I, I work for that. I ain't doing nothing else. I work for 3400 He said, Troy, you ain't got to do no physical work at all. Just walk around, get safety meetings, and talk to people. Okay. I said, for real? He said, that's all you got to do. So I went to the class. The class was five weeks. Got you. Four hours a day. I said, I don't like school, but I can do four hours a day for five <laughs> weeks. I can muscle my way to that do that. That ain't going to kill you. No. So I did that. Eight months later, I got a job, right? He got me a job after I finished school. My first check was like thirty six, thirty seven hundred dollars was my first week check. Okay. I'm like, oh yeah, I like this. I He's can like, do yeah. this shit. Yeah, yeah. So I <laughs> went on works. I went on and did that for about twelve years. Okay. Whilst my son and my everybody was still doing music and stuff and I was still going doing shows and stuff, but I started doing something totally different. I had to stop smoking weed. <laughs> Even get the job. So you had to stop smoking weed. I smoked every day. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So we start, start smoking weed and stuff, working and stuff. Right. I did that. I, I did that like twelve years. For, so safety. So hold on. Just ex explain what safety is. So who? You, safety for who? Like construction I, I, I was or? construction and all the, uh, the, the 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 plants. Okay. All the plants. You know what I'm saying? When you get your oil and gas and all that from, I'm the safety man out there. Make sure. So person, you would be the guy. To make sure it's safe. It's working safe. Going by the plan and everything. That's what I done. How was how was that? Because you did it for how long? 12 years, 12, 13 years. So now I, I, I'm, I'm working in a construction plant and little Troy is telling me- I'm your safety I, I, man. <laughs> Can you imagine? Hey, hey, Not a safety I, I got four, 500 people in, the, in, in this building that I give a safety speech to every day, right? <laughs> right. They just crunk listening. <laughs> just paying attention to what I got to say. Yeah, I, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, and then I incorporate my song into a safety speech. No, you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> So <laughs> it, it, when you when you when you're in the plants, you got people from everywhere traveling, right? Yeah. So I, I tell them, uh, I mean, where all my ballers at? Who wanna be a baller? Everybody raise their hand up. I say, you a baller, you a baller, you a baller. You know why? Cause Philip sixty six or Chevron or who we're working for, they paying us good money to be a baller right now, huh? Facts. I say, who a shot? You a shot caller? You a shot caller? You a shot caller? Why? Cause they, I pull out a little card. They give us a little stop work card. You got the right to stop a job anytime you want to. If you don't see the job being safe or you don't feel comfortable doing the job, you pull this card out. Can't nobody say nothing. That means you're a, you're a shot caller. Wow. They say, yeah. I say, nah. How many people from out of town? Everybody raise their hand up. You from out of town? You from out of town? You from out of town? That means what? We hitting the highway, <laughs> making money to fly away. Right, so, you right, know, they right. trip like, Cause I just use one of your ball, a shot yeah, caller, yeah. hitting the highway, so making money fly away. Oh, they enjoying they themselves. Fun. What? Wow. So you motivating them too? I motivate them. Your, your safety, so you, but you're making it to where they enjoy like that. Safety. Yeah. That, and okay. so when I walk out there in the, and walk out through the plant, there, everything, everybody working and all this stuff. You know, I had a saying that I used to tell everybody: when you see me walk up and you're doing your job, or mind you doing your job, and you know you're working safe, that you're trying to go home to your babies, your family, and everything, give me the thumbs up, not the finger, but the <laughs> thumbs up. So I'll walk by, and they'll be like, "Let's try." <laughs> thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, they used to love it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't harass them. Yeah. But now, if you're doing something wrong, I'm going to tell you what you're doing something wrong. Right. Now, if I come back and you're doing the same thing, come on, we got to go have a conversation now. Yeah. Because you're not finna mess something up and then indirectly get me hurt on this on this job. Yeah. Or if I ain't said nothing and you done got hurt, now they looking at me that I ain't do my job. Got you. So I'm going to do my job now. That's a fact. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> how, how was it making that transition from like the streets into working like that corporate environment? I know had to, that had to be like kind of different for you. Like how'd you make that adjustment? It was very difficult, you know, in a sense. But to me, I always knew that you want to do something different, get different results, you got to do something different. You know what I'm saying? So if God blessed me to be able to go to school five weeks for four hours a day, and then go make $38, $40 an hour, I'm going to do that. Yeah. Because a lot of people that go to college don't make $40 an hour. That's a fact. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And for me to go there and have to do, I don't have to pick up no paper, pick up no boats, no nothing, just walk around. Yeah. Starch, starch the nine every day. Right. Matching outfit. Everything I <laughs> met, everything. Hey, hey, I was best dressed safety guy. <laughs> I'm telling you. Best dress, whatever color hat, hard hat I got on, right. the my shirt, match, the shirt, my match. shirt match. 
Everybody like, man, how many hard hats you got? I got about eight, nine of them. <laughs> so I'm matching any color, any color clothes I'm wearing. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so when I go to work. Wow. <laughs> Look, wow. one day I go to work, this police officer, I, I, got, I got on a white hard hat yeah. and a white shirt. Yeah. Right? And some, and some blue jeans on, right? Oh, he see me walk by that morning. It's about five, six o'clock that morning. Four o'clock that evening, he see me walk back by. He stopped me and said, hey, bro, excuse me. I, I said, what's up? He said, what job you have that you be in this plant all day and your shirt ain't dirty? Right, you still I need, white. I need your job. <laughs> Walking through here looking like an angel. <laughs> they think, man, how you gonna come to work with a white shirt on? Right. Y'all plan on getting dirty. Right, looking clean. Clean. That's dope, man. That is so funny. Now, I, I love that. I love the fact that you were able to, to make your, make that transition in a way, kind of humble yourself to do something different yeah. and something new. Like you said, God bless you with the opportunity, and you took full advantage of it. My son, my son Tadarian, right? So he was living, uh, my check was on the counter one morning, one day, right? So I come, I say, he's always telling me, Daddy, Daddy, man, you ain't got to go to work every day. I ain't used to seeing my dad at work, man. I'm just seeing my daddy just being on his own, being his own boss. Man, let me set you up some shows, Dad. I can't, I ain't used to seeing my daddy go to work. I don't like this, Dad. I don't want you going to work. So one day he seen my check laying on the counter, right? Yeah. He said, Dad, that's your check? I said, yeah. They said, a week. He said, God, hey, Pops. <laughs> he just fell down. He said, wow, man. Come on, Pop. That kind of money you making at that time? I'm working for a company getting getting double time, so my my check is about fifty eight, fifty six hundred dollars a week. Right, because we're getting double time out of forty. Yeah, he tripping that <laughs> I'm getting this kind of money. I say yeah. yeah. I say son, blessings don't come in the form of all the time finding a hundred dollar bill on the ground, or you know saying some luck come up. Sometimes blessings come in the form of a job. Or something else, you know what I'm saying? So I took it as a blessing that I was able to get a job like this to make this kind of money. 100%. So that was my blessings to me that God said, hey, you know what? You put all the other stuff behind you. You left the streets alone. This is what I'm going to do for you. There you go. But yeah. I had to humble myself and go to school. And so when I go out to the plants, you hear a lot of people out there saying, oh, man, why he out there? He must be broke. I'm going to pull out my phone and let you see the shit I got. Then you tell me I'm broke. No, I just like to make money. Yeah. And I got blessed to come out here to go to, job, go to work. So don't think just because I'm out here working, I got to be in a, yo, he don't fell off. No, I just wanted to change in life. Right, right, right. And I changed in life and, make okay. a, and made some change too made at the same time. Made some change at the same time, <laughs> man. You know, that's not normal. You know, a lot of people, man, I can't, I can't go back from being up here to this here. I don't let no pride get in my way. Pride will get you left beside the road some fucking well. That's a fact. Yeah. That's a fact. And and like you said, you you doing something. You ain't gotta look over your back. You know you 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 safe, and and that's what's most important, man. At man, the end of the day, man, getting ten fifteen thousand dollars a month. I, I'm not mad at no. I'm not mad at myself for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real talk. Real talk. <laughs> All right, cool. So let's let's keep moving forward. So you do safety for you say eight years. Twelve. Tw Twelve years rather. 12, All right. Ten years. So what? Why why do you leave? Why you stop doing it? Well, actually, when the pandemic came, right before the pandemic came. I went to work for 22 days. Uh, no, the pandemic came. Then I went back to work. Got all off for a whole year. Then I went back for 22 days. Couldn't take it. Mm. Next six months went by. So I ain't worked for a whole year and a half. I sat at home. Me and my wife, we just sat home, watched Netflix, and I smoked my cigars every day. <laughs> gotcha. So I'm trying to figure out what's my niche, my new niche in the game, what I wanted to do. Right. I started the 18-wheeler, uh, my 18-wheeler company in 2017. Okay. I was going to buy some trucks and put people in them. Okay. Let them drive. So you formed a company in that 2017. Time. 2017. But I you. never bought a truck, never did nothing. Okay. So after the pandemic came through and I started thinking about what I wanted to do, I said, you know what? I'm going to go to school and get my CDLs. Okay. So I went to school last year and got my CDLs. Got you. So when I got my CDLs, I said, man, let me drive a truck first. So I went and bought me a truck, started driving. I was like, I like this. This is cool. Okay. Right. I th then I got my authority, my own authority and everything. So then I said, nah, I can put somebody else in it. Because if I had got started my 18 wheeler company in 2017, I wouldn't have known, I couldn't go get my truck if it was broke down somewhere. I couldn't go take it to the shop. I, could, I wouldn't have known nothing about it because I didn't know how to drive a truck. Right. So I went to learn, well, I could know what to do with my business. Right. Like I said, I started reading up on stuff and learning about the trucking business. And so now I got my own authority. I run on my own. Everything is fine now. No it's doubt. Good. Okay, let's let's take it back to 2017 real quick. When you said you you 
you got the company started. So what was that like? You formed the LLC or yeah. whatever? I went formed the LLC at right. the time. Okay. I went and got my DBA, then formed the LLC and everything. But didn't purchase a truck yet? Didn't purchase a truck. So you just kind of, you just like ready to get the company started. Now, why did you want to start a trucking company to begin with? Well, actually, I wanted to drive trucks since I was 15 years old. Really? Yeah, I wanted to drive 18-wheeler. My uncle took me on the road with him, and all my uncles now drove 18-wheelers. Uh, so I wanted to ride, if I lay footsteps, drive 18-wheelers. So he took me to Arkansas with him one day, and we was drive, he was driving for McDonald's, pulling for McDonald's, right? And he put me behind the wheel at 15 years old. Oh, wow. So I'm driving. I'm like, woo, And they talking on the radio. They big talk and stuff. You know, it's fascinating. <laughs> CV, yeah. 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 So after that. Yeah, I didn't ever do it, at, you know, when I was 15. Even when I started coming to 17, I mean, in 2017, I never did it, but there's still something that's been in my mind, in mind that I need kid. to stress that itch. Yeah, yeah, I had yeah. to stress that itch. Yeah. Did you know anybody? Like, did you have any friends outside, like, your, your family, your uncle, that owned any trucking yeah, businesses? Yeah, I had a couple, couple friends. Uh, they all got trucks, and I was talking to them about it, and when I got ready to start it, well, uh, like year before that, they said truck, truck business ain't good right now because it got slow and all the stuff, so I ain't buy no truck. I was glad I didn't. I waited until after I went to school, and then I started calling my friends and stuff, talking to them. Some of them telling me how the authority work, and some of them telling me how some of them work for companies and stuff like that. Me being a little truck, I want to be my own boss. Right. So I had to find out how to be my own boss. Gotcha. So I called the insurance company to try to get my some insurance. The insurance company quoted me eleven thousand dollars to get started. Mm. Right? I said, "Damn, oh, I got to afford eleven thousand. So I called one other friend of mine. He had it on the head, they had their own authority and everything. So he said, "Troy, man, you don't pay all that money. Man, I can get you on my authority, man. And it's like thirty-eight hundred dollars down, and uh, and I and you can run on us." I said, "Cool, bet I'll do that." Right. So I think I paid them like Tuesday or something, Tuesday, Wednesday. That Monday, I probably been taking a load. They called me that Sunday, that, that Monday morning. Hey, Troy, other, uh, my other partner don't want you to be on this authority, man. Mm, why? They say he ain't give me no reason. I ain't asked him no reason. You know what I did? I picked up the phone, called the insurance company back. Hey, go and run my insurance, man. Let's get that eleven thousand. Uh, it is he, what it is. He goes, this eleven thousand four hundred forty four dollars and sixty three cents. Here you go. <laughs> he can run this card. Yeah. And I ran. They ran my card, and I got my, you know, my insurance going. Right. But I didn't want to pay. But when you turned me down. It wasn't I ain't had the money, it was that that you you you're my friend. Right. So I'm finna work with you. Right. So I pay my I, pay, uh, I had to get the highest insurance possible through progressive. You know, they high as hell. Yeah. But, but they'll, they'll take, work with anybody. They'll work with anybody <laughs> though at the time. I had two wrecks and within three years before, prior in my personal car. Mm. Like I bagged up into somebody, so they hold that against you. Facts. I got a new a new new CDL, a new authority. Yeah, they so they, get they you. got me. Yeah. So I paid the eleven down. Then it went. Then it went up. It was fifty seven hundred for two months. Then it went up to eighty five. Then the last two months it was ten five. Mm. This is how much money I was paying in insurance because I wanted to run and be my own boss. Yeah. And I paid that. Yeah. Then uh, then uh, uh, one of the wrecks fell off. Man, sure. And I went and changed agents because my agent she was at like she couldn't give me no better deal than what they was giving me. And all of a sudden I found another agent. I'm paying less than half. I'm paying like $3,000 a month now for two trucks and a trailer. Right. Yeah, right, right. and two drivers. Wow, wow. You know that's, what I'm saying? That's crazy. But they beat me in the head at first, though. Yeah, I mean, if you don't know, you know what I'm saying, they're they going to definitely get you. All right, so let, let's go back to the beginning. So you said you, you went to, to school, right? Mm -hmm. And right after you get out of school, you you start your trucking company. You you yeah. actually go buy the truck, right? 2017 KW6T680. Okay. Automatic old man truck. <laughs> <laughs> so you went you went big. I went big. You went automatic. Big. No doubt. Well, yeah. Automatic. Do you know how to drive a manual? No. You don't drive a manual? Just... Only reason I can drive a manual. Yeah. But go and take the test. But at the time, I had, I had a messed up knee, right? Okay. And so I couldn't double clutch. Oh, the clutching. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To go take the test, you got to double clutch. Got you. So I can drive 18 wheels and I can clutch or I how to float the gears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you take the test, you got to double clutch. Yeah, got you. And that's what messed me up. I couldn't double clutch. I said, you know what? I'm just going to take the test on the manual. I mean, automatic. All my trucks are going to be automatic, so I ain't got to worry about buying no damn stick. Do you have the uh, the, the the restriction on your yeah, license? Yeah, my restriction okay. on my license, but okay. I, I can go back now and, and change, it if, change you want if I want to. But yeah. I'm buying but Like numbers. you said, you buying new anyway, and yeah. everybody's moving to Two automatic automatics. anyway. Yeah. You know, all the bigger companies and all that, and, and it's good for, like, driver retention. You mm hmm Because a lot of these new drivers coming in don't drive uh, manual. No. All right, cool. So you, you get started. Tell me about... 
once you get on the road, you get your insurance and everything set up. Tell me about that first day, man, your first load. What are you picking up? How do you get work? Tell me about that. Well, I go through the load board and different dispatchers calling me about trying to get, you know, that they can work with a new authority. Right. So they get me a load out of Houston going to Oklahoma. Do you have a trailer or are you power only at this point? At the time, I was power only. Okay. So I go get the trailer. They load it up. I'm finna take it to Oklahoma. I gas up. I mean... I fuel up fuel diesel. Up. <laughs> <laughs> I go put the, I go fill it up with diesel and everything, and and I see all the other trucks in the, at the truck stop. You know, I'm thinking when they leave it out, they going to the left. Okay. But they really going to the right. I don't know it though. Right. So I go out. I, I turn toward the left and get stuck in the ditch. Oh, My man. first load first. just got it. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm trying to back up. I'm going in the ditch in the front. And I'm backing up the trailer in the back. It's going in, in in the dish back here. I'm like, fuck, what the fuck, goddamn. So I called my partner and stayed by me. I said, man, hey, Raymond. Hey, man, uh, I need you, bro. He said, what's wrong? I said, man, I'm stuck in the dish, bro. I need you right now, man. I, don't care. I know you might be in the bed, bro, but I need you right now. He came. I had to spot him, though. If I had a spotter, I probably could have got out. Right. So I, I was spotting him, letting him know how much he can come up, how far he can go back, and so, because, you know, it was right, at nighttime. Right, so right. got it out. He bagged it all the way back up for me. I turned around and went out the other way. So, so you got it out without a wreck no, or anything? You had to pull I, it out? I ain't pull out. He just, he just he, was able to he get it out He had to maneuver in, out okay, back, turn okay. a little bit, and got, got me out the ditch. Okay, My yeah. first load. <laughs> first load, you know that? Right. So I get in there, he, back, he get me out. I head on to Oklahoma. Going to Oklahoma, turn the corner, my back, uh, the trailer's hitting the curves and everything. I'm like, damn, man, I know I know how to drive a truck better than this, man. <laughs> I ain't hit these curves in in school. In school, right, right, right. Taking the test, I ain't hit these curves. Right. So I get to get to the plant, the place I had to go, and they tell me put it in 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 in, in the hole right there, number seventeen. Right. So it's two trailers, oh, 18 and sixteen. Oh man. So okay, now in school they only teach you how to bag up between cones. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is my first time for the bag yeah. up in between, between trailers. two trailers. Right. So I'm trying. Game. I'm looking at this. Ooh, I'm about to hit this thing. I'm trying to turn. Right. The fucking tra the trailer wouldn't turn like I wanted <laughs> to turn. I'm going up. I'm out there about 45 minutes. The person, the dude at the dock, just simply looking at me like this. <laughs> I'm like, oh well, shit. I'm gonna the get in there. Are coming out. They taping you. Like, man. look at this dude right so here. I call my boy Raymond again. Hey Raymond, say man, I don't know what's wrong with this trailer. I cannot get this trailer in between these two these two trucks, bro. Raymond gonna block you. Raymond say. <laughs> Raymond say what? I say man, this trailer is not turning, man. I'm I'm oh maneuvering it. It's not turning to, to turning this stall in, in between these two trucks. He say man, get out and see where tandem's at. <laughs> I get out. I say yeah, my back tires. I don't call them tandems. I call them back tires. <laughs> I say, they all way in the back. The way you need to move your tandems and put your tandems to the front. I say, how you move to the front? <laughs> <laughs> so he say, most, most trucks have got a lever. You're going to pull the lever up. Now you're going to have a button you got to push in. What they got? I told him we got the lever. He said, well, pull that lever up. Right. Pull the lever up. Now go and get in your truck. Push your, uh, your yellow brake in. Leave the red one out. And bag up until it come all the way up to the front. So I'm doing it, getting out, going, look. I say, it's on number nine right now. He said, bring it up to about number four or five. Right, I bag right, it up some right. more. And then he say, now turn, hit your, uh, push it in gear for you can lock the tandem. I mean, lock, lock the locking pins. I lock the locking pins and stuff. I don't know nothing about this shit. No <laughs> locking pins or nothing. So I lock the locking pins. He's pin. talking to you like whatever, whatever you say, Whatever you say. I'm, right, hey, I'm, I'm it's rough the <laughs> So as I did that, I was able to put it in the hole, man. Oh, that was a hell of a experience. And after that, then I got back home. I called the school. Yeah. Say, hey, man. <laughs> hey, man, y'all ain't teach me how to move these damn talents, man. I done drove the truck all the way down there with the talent to the back and run over the curb. Oh hey, they Troy, we don't teach you about tandems, man. We just teach you these are your tandems. <laughs> You right. learn you learn by tandems when you start working on the job. Right, right, right. Oh my gosh. So 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 the moral of that story is you don't learn much in, in truck driving school. Man. No, you they just really... they teach you how to drive the truck and learn about the truck, but they don't teach you actually going on the road. So I advise anybody that's trying to get in the trucking business, go to school first. Don't just let your homeboy teach you how to drive a truck. Go to school and learn. Learn this pre-trip. Learn all this stuff. It's very, very valuable that you do these pre-trips and everything every day. Right. You got to learn how to do this stuff. And it's valuable to go learn with a big company. They're going to put somebody in the driver's seat with you every day. They're going to drive. They're going to let you drive a little bit. For you can get familiar with it to learn 
everything about trucking on um, while you're on the road. Then next thing you know, they're going to put somebody in there and y'all going to team drive. Yeah. So you're going to get a lot of experience before you just up and do it the way I did. I took it the hard way. You know, I had a lot of friends of mine tell me, man, Troy, man, you probably need to go sign on with a company and then, you know, then get on, you know, like that. But I wanted to do it a different route. Everybody got a route that they want to take that they're going to do for themselves. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I learned. You know what I'm saying? But I advise anybody, go learn from somebody that's going to teach you with some of the big companies. If it, if you could do it over again, would you have leased on first? No. You would have still done it I still done the same your way. way. Yeah, I, I still you, paid all that money that I paid, the learning experience that I learned, because I was so careful and so assertiveness about what I was doing because my money was involved. Right, right. You had skin in the game. I had skin in the game. Yeah. Then, I had got, then after the first load came back, I went and bought a trailer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I went and bought me a trailer and put my name, biggest Walmart name on their trailers. Berkeley. Berkeley Trucking. There you go. On that whole side of the <laughs> goddamn trailer. You see me going down the street. I have people stop me when I be at a truck stop. Man, who is Berkeley Trucking, man? Right. Because I look like. You look like the big boys. Yes. Yeah, 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 100%. <laughs> so you said you got that right after that first load? After the first load. So that first, that first experience didn't it discourage you, tell you to slow down a no, little bit? No, no. I'm going to have to drive <laughs> somebody else. I'm going to have to drive somebody else trailer anyway right facts if i'm doing power only but i knew i had a loadout trailer that was the first thing was a loadout trailer okay so i kept it for nine days okay yeah and the money i made off that trailer in them nine days i like oh no i gotta buy me a trailer got you so i called uh uh, uh some friends of mine asking about trailers and stuff they hooked me up with a boy in montgomery alabama okay tk tk uh uh it's a nice thing called tk right oh, yeah yeah so uh terrence i called him he sold me a trailer. I okay. drove down there and got the trailer from him. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Got you. And it was, ever since then, it's been nice. What kind of trailer? A van? Uh, a drive van, 53 Dri drive van. Okay. Uh huh. Uh, uh, um, Wash Bosch. Okay, Wash Got a Wash Bosch, double dose, swing, uh, air ride. Nice trailer. Nice trailer. So I done made some money with the trailer. You know what I'm saying? I'm good. Okay. So then that, doing that for a while, then I bought my second truck. Okay. Yeah. So think, I mean, obviously, if you buy more trucks, things are working out. So what type of freight are you doing? Like general freight off the general load freight. board? General so freight. I got, I got, I, I hooked up with my guy named, named Keyshawn out of Atlanta, GM6 Logistics. Okay. In Atlanta. Yeah. I hooked up with him, right? I seen his name on, 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 on Instagram. Okay. And I just reached out and talked, called him. And we started vibing right off the top, real, real good. Okay. So all the other dispatchers that was calling me and getting in touch with me, you know, through my business company and stuff. Right. I pushed them to the side and just been going with him, and me and him been rocking and rolling ever since. Okay, got you, got you. So he, so he's your dispatcher. He's my dispatcher. He's he, my man. He keeps you moving. What well, to keep my trucks moving? So your your operation is generally like OTR. Like yeah. You, like what do you got? What are you guys doing? Like four days on, three days. Like how does the operation come? No, of man, I got I, I got to tell you about my my driver, man. I, when I was driving. On the first truck, I stay gone a day, two days, three days, come back home. You know what I'm saying? I'm off three, four days. Right. <laughs> but well, I got a, a um, guy named Philip. He went to school with me. Okay. He went to driving school, right? That's where I went to. Yeah. And I, I told him in class, man, I'm going to get you to drive me, bro. I'm telling you, I'm going to get you to drive me. Because right. I seen every day he came to school every day with a positive attitude. He was asserting this. He ain't had no issues. He was trying to drive. He was trying to learn. He was motivated every single day. Right. So when he was driving for some other big company after he got out of school. So he went learned from them okay. first. Right. He learned from them. I'm learning on my own at the same time. You <laughs> right, feel me? Right, right, right. So when I bought my, I bought a, uh, another KW, right? A 2007 KW with a cat motor in it. I bought it for the motor. Okay. That run hard. Yeah. So I called him. Hey man, I bought another truck, man. Come on, ready for you. I'm, this is what I'm gonna pay you. This is what I'm gonna do. And this is all the deductions I'm gonna take out. He said, "Bet, Troy, I'm on my way home. Finna go take these people their truck." He was upstate. Okay. He's in uh, and he stayed on a month, month and a half with them. Right. That's how he do. So when he come on, start driving for me. I'm sending, trying to send him out a week and come back, a week and a half, come back. He's, nah, man. Like, I don't do Troy, that. I stayed on the road a month, month and a half for them white folks. I stay on the road with you that long. And besides what you paying me, I don't want to come home right now. Mm. Let me stay on the road. 
Gotcha. I tell you when so I want to come found, home. You found a gold in a, a drop. A golden. Yeah. Philip coming. What's up, bro? <laughs> <laughs> nah, shout shout to him, man. Yes. You don't find guys like that. Yes. You know, often that just want to stay out. Yeah. A lot of guys want to come home, but some people like the freedom of the road. Yeah. So I got like two other guys from the school and told them I'm going to put them in some of these trucks too. Okay. As I buy them. You so know what I'm saying? You've been recruiting from the school. From the school that I went okay. to. You went to school with them. With them. So I see how they was in school. Right. And they all talk about they want to stay on the road. They want to go on the road. Uh, so I'm going to reach back and grab the other two guys in a minute. Okay, okay. Yeah. Got you, got you, got you. That's dope. Sure. All right, so now, now you're building a trucking company now. So yeah. how is it like dealing with th those responsibilities of having employees and, and all that and the compliance and everything of dealing with a trucking company? Because that's, that's new. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm sure it's new to you. So well, how, how, have you, how have you been adapting to, to that? Reading up on a lot of stuff. Going, look, see what needs to be done for 2290s, uh, FMSA, and Look at your safety, uh, safety.com and stuff. You're looking at stuff I need to do. Yeah. And then at the same time, a lot of people be emailing me stuff all the time. Well, you ain't, you ain't apply for this. Yeah, you MC90 and that's and that. Everybody trying so, to make their money. You make their money. <laughs> I pay nobody to do you nothing. You don't pay nobody. So you, you do it all. I did everything. Excuse me. Everything yeah. on my own. I okay. didn't pay nobody to do anything. Right. All they, all that I got to do, read up on it. Oh, I can do it myself. Yeah. And I'm a paperwork. Right. I was just doing paperwork from the music. Yeah. Paperwork from from safety. I was gonna so, say it goes back to your time yes. in the music where you just were so focused on like I'm not gonna let anybody handle my business. Yes, I'm that's gonna what, handle my own business. That's what I done. I, I started doing all the every paperwork myself and then I got my wife. She she do all all the payroll, input all the receipts and everything in and keep everything lined up for me. So I get a statement every week from 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 uh 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 the uh the dispatch. Yeah. Everything he do all week. Everything that the driver do all week, we put a statement, said pay them their money every every Tuesday. Every Tuesday I pay them. Gotcha. From every load that we took out for that whole entire week. If we get a load on Sunday or Friday, got to drop Monday, you get paid for that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we get the whole week, good week, you know what I'm saying? And I pay everybody real good. And my wife, she keep over there all the bookkeeping, all the paperwork and stuff. And then I got some other people on outside of her. That that do other little small things for me, but okay. mainly it's all in house right now. Okay, dope. So how how many drivers do you have now? I only have one driver, one driver. and two trucks. I just bought that that 2007. Okay, I had it two months. Yeah. So I took a load with it to Arkansas and came back like Saturday night. I just bought the truck. Just I got my my portion plates. I was able to go out of town. So I parked the truck that Saturday night. Monday morning, I got in to go drop a load off about 60 miles down the street. That Monday. I dropped the load off by 12, 12, 15, something like that. Sitting there in the truck, dropped the load off. Got back on the freeway. 10 minutes, 15 minutes later, the truck catch on fire mm. while I'm driving the truck. While you're driving the truck? While I'm driving the truck, brand new truck driver, unaware of what really I need to do. Right. But coming, my common sense, superhero common sense kicked in. <laughs> superhero common sense. <laughs> so smoke coming up in the cab. I'm oh like, my God. oh, well, this is not, that's not a good sign. And it's on, the, it's on the passenger side. Smoke just coming in. It's black smoke coming in. I'm like, what the fuck? So I'm start trying to get over. I'm like trying to get over. Cars coming. I'm trying to slow oh down and get God. on over. Before I got over, the whole, ca the whole front of the truck is blazing up. Mm. Fire coming up. I get on to the start uh, to the side, jump out, grab the fire fire uh fire extinguisher. Yeah. Oh, that ain't gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me let me get away from this truck before it go boom. He said, that ain't, that ain't gonna, gonna do, do it. it. That ain't that thing, that thing is not gonna do this here. I bag up and start videotaping the truck and everything, cars coming by, next thing, boom. Oh my god. It, boom. I mean, I got videos of it, man. It's just fire everywhere. But I was so blessed to get out. I jumped out with my, my glasses, my wallet, and my cell phone. Wow. Everything else left in the truck. Wow. What, did, has anybody did a diagnosis to find out what was wrong, what happened, like what caused that? Well, happened? you know, DOT gonna come out. Yeah. DOT, first thing he had me, you got your, you got your ELD? I said, yeah, it's in the truck. Right. He said, well, that's gone. <laughs> That's gone. So I ain't got to worry about that. That's gone. I ain't got to worry about that. I ain't worry as far about as I'm that. concerned, everything's legal. All it's legal. Like, hey, everything's straight. He said, you got to load back down. I said, no, I just dropped the load off. He said, okay. And he's looking at the truck. We walk over, look at it. He said, ain't no telling what this happened. This thing done burnt all the way down. 
He was so cool about it. They say, I'm not going to write you up, give you no violations or nothing, because I can't tell if the error on your part or nothing, right. the way this truck burnt up. I'm glad that you didn't hit nobody, nobody hit you. Thank God. Ain't no fatalities going or happening or nothing like that, so you're not going to get no, no no record for me. Right. Fire marshaling them all coming out, and they trying to figure out, we can't tell where it came from. It, had, it burnt all the way down. So then I called the insurance company, right? Told them what happened. Sent the report in, you know, uh, she told me, well, I need to get the fire department report and all this here, right? Then she called me the next day because I was on the news. Okay. So I made the, new, the, 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 the right. news, the news and everything, headlines, you know, yeah. then they came to my house to interview me, the news did. Okay. So they interviewed me in the news and I showed them the video, videos all on the news and all this and I put it on my social page, right. you know, that I got blessed and, uh, at this, at the, yesterday, right? And everything on, on right. my social page. Right, right. Man, the insurance lady called me back today. I didn't know you was famous. <laughs> I seen I seen you on the news. Yeah. Everybody talking about your record on the news. I ain't know you was my client. Don't worry about no no fire report or nothing like that. All I need is a tires to your, your your truck, and we're gonna just pay you off. Oh wow! They didn't do no investigation. Anybody told me what happened to my Are truck? You serious? I don't know today what happened to the truck. <laughs> but they was like. It. We don't want to have this boy back on the news saying we ain't paying. Facts. Facts. <laughs> What's up? I don't know. At the end of the day, they want to end it right there. Right, call end the day. It. They want their name dragged through the mud or nothing yeah. like that. And Progressive, they came through and paid right off the top. I mean, I, I got paid, I think, like two and a half weeks or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So so you've taken some, like, like major, like, quick hits, like, early. Early. You know what I'm saying? Early, real quick. <laughs> but, you know, if you can weather the storm. Yeah. That's what they say. Like when you're shooting dice, like my boy, my brother KB, you know what I'm saying? Big bank take big bank. If you can you can start to put out money all day and you losing, and you still got money to come out, you can come back up. Facts. Yeah, you as long as you can stay in the game. Yeah. See, I was able to stay in the game. And then I, I went and bought an uh uh another KW, 2017. Okay. T six eight, another laser man truck. <laughs> I bought it, right? Okay. And so uh I called my guy friend that I bought the first trailer from. I know he had another trailer because he switched over from all uh, driver hands to reefers. reefers. He got nine reefers. Okay. So I'm like, I called him in December. Say, bro, I really need that trailer you got, man. He's like, man, that's my spouse trailer, Troy. I said, man, I know it, man. But you know what done happened to me, man. I'm trying to get myself back situated and trying to go by this, you know, get myself back up. I need that trailer. He said, Troy, man, I'm going to sell you the trailer. Right. Right. You know, it, it wasn't cheap, though. Right, you know what right, I'm saying? It you wasn't had cheap. To pay. So, Especially now in yeah. this market, Man. trailers are crazy. Trucks well, and trailers. He sold to me for the, for the same same amount of money, right? Yeah. So that was in like December the 8th, 16th, 17th. He told me, come get it. I said, Man, I can't come till out of Christmas. I'll be down there in January. First week of January, I come down there. I go down there to Montgomery, Alabama, that, that January the 2nd. Got there at 1030 that night, right? Talk, called him, say, I'm in town, man. I told, I'm right down the street from your spot. I got me a hotel room right here. He said, bet. You know, I get to work 6 o'clock in the morning. So come on, check out the trailer. Get your paperwork done. And I'll get your load going back. Yeah. That's how you did last time. Yeah. Which, that's a good thing. Yeah. Make so some I, money. Do your thing. I get out there, go to the back where the trailer's at. I'm like, where the trailer at? I turn around. He pull up. He say, Troy, man, my trailer been parked right there all this goddamn time. <laughs> I said, it ain't parked there no more. He say, man, <laughs> he put his head down. <laughs> what? I done drove 11 miles to get here now. No, the trailer's not there. The trailer's not there. Okay. So we go inside. He got cameras and stuff. Somebody stole the trailer the same night at 12, 15 at night. That night at 12, 15, a white truck pulled up to it, bag up to it, and pulled the trailer off. Oh, my so God. So police, he called the police and all that, right? He called the police, and they made a police report and all this here. You know, he, they, they made copies of it. But before then, I... Put, I called Arrow, where I bought my first truck from, right? And told him, hey, I am uh, uh, found a truck I like. I told him I'm going to give him $30,000 down on the truck. Right. They said, okay, Troy. So I'm down there waiting to get this trailer. At 8.30, by 9 o'clock that morning, Arrow people called me. Phil called me. They said, Troy, uh, they denied you on the truck. I said, what you mean they denied me on the truck? He said, well, you're too new. You're growing too fast, rapid, rapid, rapid growth, yeah. rapid growth. So yeah. they don't want to give you that truck. I say, damn, for real, for real? He said, nope. I said, man, I'll give y'all $40,000 down on the truck. He say, let me call him. <laughs> he called him back, put it through, called me back. Try to turn you down. 
Okay. They turned me down for the truck. Okay. Now God knew. Tell you how I look at it. God knew that I wasn't gonna be able to get. I wasn't gonna be able to have a truck if I pulled that trailer back. Right. Cause right. he knew that thirty thousand I had set to the side, waiting to go buy this tra- this truck. Yeah. I wasn't gonna have. Uh, I wouldn't have nothing to pull with this trailer. Facts. So I called Phil back. Hey Phil, truck eighty five. Now I paid seventy three for the same truck. Five months before then, okay. it done went up to 85. Okay, <laughs> right. You see what I'm saying? Right. How quick it done went up. S- super quick. And yeah. more miles. Yes. So I call Phil back. Phil, what they want? It's a truck, man. They just they don't want to carry that. I said, I'll tell you what, Phil. I'm going to give you 65 racks on that truck. I want that truck. He called me right back. Come get the truck. There you go. I say, all right, good. All right, I'll be there to get the truck. Then I, you know, talking about the insurance package, right? I wanted to get full covering warranty on it, right? So there was another 10. So it made the truck 95, right. right? So I told him, go ahead and put that on there. I want the truck. I turned around and called my bank. Hey, look here. I have finna put this much money down on the truck. I want y'all to finance it through my business credit. Mm. They did it. Mm. So now I got my business credit going. Right. So, right. yeah. yeah, so I took that money and gave it to my bank and started my business credit. Gotcha. So now, after I pay this this down, I ain't I ain't got to put no money down going through 100%. my bank no more. Yeah, you see yeah. what I'm saying? Because yeah. at first they wouldn't do it through my business credit; it was too new. Right. But I had nothing on my business you credit. Had to do everything in personal guarantee. Yeah. yeah, and I ain't want to do that on the sale. When I put all this money down, right. they like, you know, they ain't gonna let no sixty five racks. Go by. 100%, 100%. And the truck was 85, and I'm giving you 65 on the truck. Yeah. You ain't carrying nothing. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's it. Like but, five grand? <laughs> a couple, couple thousand no, dollars? Yeah, it was, it, I owe like 25,000. 20, 25 grand? Yeah, 25 grand on the truck. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So, but God knew that I wasn't going to be able to get no truck with that $30,000. Right. I had 30000 for the for the trailer, 30000 for the truck. He said, you know what? I'm going to make this truck, this trailer come up missing. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't that way, time yet. It wasn't time to get this trailer yet. Cause if I let you get this trailer and you go all the way back home, you're not gonna have no truck to pull it with. Right. So I just took that money for the trailer, put with that, added some, and got me a truck. Cause I can make some money with a truck, but I can't make no without a trailer. I can make I can't make no money with a trailer without a truck. Right. Right. Yeah. Got you. Got you. That's crazy, man. Yeah. That is crazy. Stole it this at night at twelve fifteen at night. I got the videotape. <laughs> I'm so goddamn mad because I wanted it, yeah. but God knew better than I knew. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? First, you know, I'm like, I know this boy ain't playing games with me because he got too much money. He got too many trucks. Yeah. So I know he ain't playing no game, but I seen it on videotape. I'm okay. It's real, you know. Got you. Yeah. What 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 are some of the similarities you see between the music game and the trucking game? I ain't, uh, you know, you, well, you can run into some shy people, people that people. don't don't hold they end up at a bargain on, on 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 business, you know, like anything though, you know. Right. But I try to always put myself in a position that my business is straight, and I try to make sure I cover all corners of your angle that you come to me at doing. Whatever I'm doing, something with you, I may try try to cover these different angles. You know what I'm saying? Like like with with me with dispatching and dispatching and Raycons and stuff like that. I get all the Raycons. So you can't tell me you're going to pay me $700 to go take this low or $1,500 to go take this low. I need the Raycon, Raycon from the ship. Right. Email from them directly to me. That way, ain't no real raft going on now. Yeah. I know what everything is. Yeah. I done read the special notes in there, things <laughs> you got to do. At first, I wasn't reading the special notes. Right, right, right. But they have some little stuff in there in the yeah, special yeah, notes. Pay that, attention. <clears throat> that, that's why they're called special notes. <laughs> special notes. <laughs> We took a load, my driver did, and we didn't get a sticker from the people, right? A little sticker. They did not pay us the money. Now, we done sent the, all the paperwork back into the factory and company and everything. Right. They wouldn't pay it because we didn't have a sticker. It took us two weeks. Notes. Was it in the notes to, to get that? Yeah. It was in the notes to get this sticker. That's crazy. That is crazy, man. So you 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 went you you you're going big on this trucking company, big. man. You, you go big or go home. Brand new equipment. You get in <laughs> your, your name across the trailer. <clears throat> you know what what are your goals in terms of growing this trucking company? Like, where do you see it in the next three to five years? Like, what's your vision? I don't want them three to five trucks. I almost okay. want I almost want to scale it that big. That's not what I that's not what I want to do. I don't really scratch my itch already. Mm. But I want to have about three trucks running. I'm gonna get out the truck and have somebody that's in them. Then I make sure all the maintenance and everything taking care of the trucks and stuff and oversee everything. Cause my next adventure is coming up. 
This mm. is not where I'm stopping at. Got you. Yeah. What's next? Motivated speaker. Motivational speaker. Yes. Yeah. I love that for you. Yeah. You have such a dope story, man. Like, that is exactly your lane because you were already doing it. Like, when you were talking about safety, like, you yeah. were already being a motivational speaker and you have so much energy and charisma, I could <laughs> definitely see you doing that. And, yeah. And you just have, like, living so many different lives and, and, and you would definitely inspire people, man. I hope so. That's my plan on it. That's okay. So motivational speaker, that's dope. So so do you want to like you you want to kind of like go and like touch like a crack, like thousands of people in big stages and all that? Yeah, that's your thing. Yeah, I just um, I used to have a program a while back called Real Ballers Don't Do Drugs. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Where I went and spoke at all the schools, community centers, put on plays and everything. I did that already. Okay. Then I had a. <clears throat> and a part inside of that called the start program. The start program, I tell all the kids to say this behind me, start, S-T-A-R-T. What that, what that spell? Start, that's right. Start taking another route today. I don't care what you did yesterday, but today we're going to take another route. Yes, the, yesterday you walked on this side of the street and they were there smoking weeds, uh, shooting dice and drinking beer. So today, walk the other side of the street. That's the route we're going to take today. We're going to start taking another route. I don't care what you did yesterday, but today, start taking another route today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that. Where, 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 where does that come from? Where does that, uh, you, you being inspired to want to help people and, and, and talk to kids and motivate people, why do you want to do that? It, it's been in my, it been in me all my whole entire life, you know what I'm saying? I remember when I was trying to be a, a crossing guard in elementary school. <laughs> so it started, it started, it started there. That's helping people, right? right? right, right. So I go to the principal and ask him, can I be a cross, crossing guard? He told me no, I was too little. Uh. So he said, oh, next year come back after you grow some and then I'll let you be a crossing guard. Over the summer, I ain't grew an inch. <laughs> Came back. I asked him about being a crossing guard. He told me, I try, I know you still saw the little. I say, I can do it. I don't care how little I am. They just got that bigger than me. They can't do it better than me. I can do it. I convinced them to be a crossing guard, and I became a crossing guard. Right, right. Then from there, I became a, a, a lifeguard. Right. So I was lifeguard in the swimming pool, saving, saving people and all this stuff. So it been in me Superhero. all it been in me all my whole life, helping people and doing stuff for others, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And then even with the music business, like you said, you put the young guys on and, yeah. and, and gave them a a, a, a platform. different platform yeah. and all that. So yeah, I mean that if when you really look at it, that's pretty much what your life has been about. That's yeah. your life's work, man, helping others. <laughs> that's dope bro that's dope well listen this this has been definitely a super dope podcast i i love it man like this was everything i expected and more because i you know we hadn't met yet but yeah. your personality is so dope and Appreciate i had so much it. fun um so customarily on this show we always have to give a final thought and you've been dropping jewels all day but the final thought is like just something to leave the audience with whether whether it's an entrepreneurial jewel or a spiritual jewel or just whatever comes to mind and then lastly, just letting everybody know where they can connect with you, learn more about Berklet Transportation, uh, Transport or Transportation? Berklet Trucking Company. Trucking Company, my fault, yeah. Ber Berklet Trucking Company, mm -hmm. and, and also, you know, how to connect with you personally as well. So let's start with that final thought. I'll tell anybody, when you find yourself at the end of the rope, double tie your knot. Hold on, have faith, pull yourself back up, no matter what it is. Don't let nobody else kill your dream. Don't, don't let nobody kill your dream. What you believe in is what you believe in. They might don't have the vision to see what you see. So sometimes you can't run your dream by everybody all the time. You got to go make your dream happen and then come back and they done seen it, then they'll believe in it. Mm. So be, be, be in your own lane of what you believe in and stay positive what you believe in and do it. You can always do it. That's just me. I love that. I love that. And where can people connect with you? Uh, they can hit me up at berkeleytruckingcompany.com, uh, too, you know what I'm saying? I got a website and everything. Or you can hit me up at 832-350-8329. You know, we have a lot of loads and stuff going out. Uh, matter of fact, I just got a broker a deal for 38 loads out of Houston Port to Mesa, Louisiana, uh, Mesa uh, Arizona, and I got 59 loads from New Orleans going there. Mm. So if you got a flatbed and you've been doing trucking for a little while, you need to give me a call, 832-350-8329. And uh, I got some heavy loads going out, too. Okay. It is. I got some job opportunities. Yes. Listen, Hustle Fam, if you can't respect that, your whole perspective is whack. whack. You know what I like to say, right? Ah, you feel me? Don't Listen. talk about my man. <laughs> he talking about my man, huh, KB? <laughs> you feel me? You feel me? Check it out. Yo, this has been dope, man. I really enjoyed myself. 
Um, you know what we like to say at the end of the show, uh, if you smell something burning, it's only your desire. Myself, Troy, we out. We out. My man.